don't have any concerns about integrity with the early voting because we have photo ID in the state of Georgia. And 92% of the vote was cast in person with a photo ID without a problem. Um, and certainly there was some discussion around should we um, uh, have a lesser amount of time for early voting. And, and I really don't support that notion. <coughs> I think we need to have the time that we have because almost four million people voted in this state. And the idea that our counties can manage four million people in a week plus a day is just not a practical thing to, to try to get your hands around. So we've got the right kinds of securities and checks and balances in place to be able to handle um, having that level of in-person voting um, for that time period. Around the budget and organizational changes, it, it is obviously no secret that at the state level and certainly in the counties and the cities that extraordinarily difficult budget decisions need to be made. With that said, I, I come out of the private sector and so I, I view budgeting as an ongoing pursuit of efficiency. It shouldn't be you know, this up and down. We have lots of revenues, yay, let's spend a lot of money and then the revenues are down and you have to go through this incredible crisis uh, uh, time period. It should be ongoing and that's what we've done in the Secretary of State's office. The first thing that we did when I came in is I asked every division to please give me a list of every single program and initiative and service that was offered out of each division. I thought that was a pretty straightforward simple request and it turned out to be a lot uh, more detailed and onerous for them than I had expected. Once we finally got it, it was really interesting and intriguing and at the same time somewhat disturbing because we found duplication not just from division to division but from our agency to other agencies. So we were able to right off the bat streamline and, and get rid of that duplication so that everybody was doing their job and not doing someone else's job in addition to that. We reformed our budget uh, process. We have always used zero-based base budgeting in the Secretary of State's office, meaning that you start your budget every year from zero. I never had a CEO in the private sector who let me start my budget on the amount that I got last year just because that's how much I got last year. And so if anybody knows a CEO like that, Here let me know. If, if uh, as your Secretary of State, I came forward and said to you, I'm going to count some paper ballots that were in somebody's trunk, I would hope you would run me out of office. <laughs> that is absurd and that is what's happening there. Now I will tell you this, I think that ever, if ever there was a case being made for not relying over, overly heavily on paper ballots, Minnesota is it. I mean they, all of their issues are coming with the paper ballots of trying to deal with with all of the volume of paper ballots. Um, it's still hung up in the courts and I think it's gonna be there for um, some time. And, the, and what would happen is we would now get this proof of citizenship up front at the beginning of the registration process versus on the back end, which is the way it works now, so that when someone registers to vote and sends in their voter registration form, we run a match with Department of Driver Services and or Social Security Administration if there's no match here. That information comes back and if there's a question about that individual's citizenship, that individual is contacted and they need to provide the information. Now, if they want to vote and they haven't provided it, they have to vote a challenge ballot. They then have three days to come in and deal with the challenge ballot. If they don't, your elections officials have to hold a hearing very detailed process on the back end where if we do it on the front end we can really streamline that for elections officials as well as for voters.